<laughs> <laughs> uh oh, here it comes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. I don't know what this is. Man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Look, I even had to laugh. They say Corey and Martin look like Cruella DeVille henchmen. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. I tell you people, what do I like more? What do I like more than, you know, God honest, good movies out there? I love the bad movies. I really do. They give me, and I know this because, you know, sometimes my best of list is so easy to make. It's so simple. But then I get to these worst of lists, and I'm like, wow, there was so much to choose from. <laughs> it's funny because I actually had fewer on my worst of list than my best of list. Let's start out with number 10. No service. It's not everything is possible. Good evening. I'm Mr. Rurik. Let me officially welcome you to- And this suit is to... too big for me. <laughs> Look at that bag ass suit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, Mr. Rourke used to tailor his shit I know. and make it look nice. I don't know what the f*** this is you're doing, but people, this it's is... It's as if they originally cast somebody else <laughs> and he stepped in the last it's minute. Not, it's almost like they cast the son. People, there's a show called... This is what is this is the movie at number 10, Fantasy Island. They mm. used to have a guy named Mr. Rourke in that show. It's almost like they had the son of Mr. Rourke come in and he put on his daddy's suit. I, I feel and it like, didn't fit. I feel like they originally cast Michael Pena as a Tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Mr. Rock didn't work out, so they're like, all right, well, you're just going to play yeah, this yeah, part. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, hey, man, you Latin, come on, take this uh, shit. Perfect. But people, Fantasy Island from Blumhouse. The reason why this makes my number 10 is because it's not, look, there's so many things worse than this on my list. But for starters, I really, really, really have a sore point for movies that go in and take a property and miss the point of that property which they completely did. This is the 70s TV show an early 80s TV show Fantasy Island it's about people go to an island and whatever, whenever they go there their fantasies come true. Now usually it worked out as some like schlotzy romantic subplot in these shows. Here I admire them for trying to make this and pitch it as a horror film yeah, which in the end it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't very scary, but I did admire the, the, the you know, trying to do an alternate approach. And as much yes. as I like, like, this movie's not good, but I didn't hate it. I, I hate aside, I just judge movies based on now. Did you, what, what if you're trying to do? Did it work? No, shit, don't. And no, <laughs> no, I don't need to get mad at a movie. I don't need to fucking hate it. Did, you know, I'm judging movies on whether it is a, a critique. Did you fucking achieve what you want to do? And was the, and was the outcome dismal and, uh, or abysmal? And this is what it was. At number nine, I'm sure so, some of you might remember our review of this film. I, this is one of the, I, I'll say this, this is one of the most fun reviews that I did in 2020. I can't. I can't, I'm sorry. He's like, he, he so hurt. hurt. <laughs> he looks so hurt. Yeah. People, <laughs> we, Wait, you, you, you really gonna do me like this? <laughs> Boy, you look mad. <laughs> Boy, that's, he, that's why he went crazy, man. man. <laughs> Look at his head still a zipper to it. <laughs> like he still got a chance, but shit, this was it's ready to come out. Hey, hey. <laughs> we are talking about at number nine, fate for my list, fatal affair. Mm. In their attempt to make another fatal attraction, they went they they, they went so so fast from zero to a hundred yeah. that mm. this shit got stupid. It really is a story how blue balls drove a nigga crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, there ain't no way, there ain't no way else to play. <laughs> and that Cause, brother. Because that's a look like, shit, it took me 10 years to get ten, this line done. I've been following your ass on Facebook for a decade. I, I don't know how I'm going to do this again. <laughs> Man, let me tell y'all something. This movie, it just, it's. Because, listen, it's two different characters, and the way it switches, it's insane. Omar Epps plays. A guy that gets in a, a hold of his old flame, or you know what could have been. They didn't. They never really went through with anything. But now that she's confessing that she's had trouble with uh, her husband, or she feels. Listen, she sit up here and tell this man what she drunk. Well, you know he feel like a stranger now. No wonder this dude went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I wouldn't kill nobody over it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't stalk her ass like that. But that's the first thing. It's just kind of like. All right, both these characters. First of all, she she turns from oh my husband ain't giving me that good dicking down to oh I love him to him like. 
oh, look at me. I'm so smooth. Yeah, girl, we can get with this too. Fuck you, bitch. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and he does try to kill her, man. This is because they, th- th- this, th- this guy has blue balls to the point where it made him into a sociopath. And that is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I mean, there is a lesson in be careful who you complain about your significant other to. <laughs> yeah. You don't know the mind of a killer. So I get that. But. There's points in here where he gets with a younger chick mm-hmm. and still is mad at this, the, the, the chick he's trying to get with. You know? And her best friend doesn't believe her when she says, oh, this God. guy's psycho. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And so, oh, he said you'd say that. You're just jealous of me. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. I'm trying to warn you. <laughs> yeah, this is dumb. This is, this is a, the only thing with this movie is that this is one that goes on my recommended list. <laughs> It is fun. It is just so stupid that it's fun to watch. <laughs> Brother by oh, picking right. pits ready. I mean, the ending of this movie is absolutely hilarious. Everything really, oh, yeah. involving the hobo. <laughs> who is, oh, who is, who is the character I care the most for? Because, oh, come on. I didn't do, he didn't need to, that didn't need to happen to him at all. Even that, no. Yeah, people, that's what I mean by twists. <laughs> they have resolutions. The criminal who's Omar Epps here thinks of things to, like, get around the law. And yeah. they, none of it. None. Zero. Makes any sense. My number eight movie on the list of worst movies of 2020. We've no choice but to embark on this perilous journey. All right, folks, you said enough. You heard enough. Yeah. I hate that gorilla. Yeah. I hate that gorilla. I hate that song. You hate that gorilla. I hate all these goddamn animals. People, I'm talking about Dr. Do little, which did little to do anything to make a good movie right here. This right here made animals talk, as you know, with the legend of Dr. Do little and gave them the most annoying things to say. And they never shut the up. These animals here had made this movie because of everything they had to say, which was of no substance at all. They made this truly one of the most annoying movies of 2020. Instead of making these characters things, animals, people, anything, making them characters that we care about, the, everything out of their mouths was a joke. The way these characters lacked any kind of emotional value was almost like they were trying to make a mockery out of this film. It was almost a parody of things like this, of talking to animals. You know, you you would think that Robert Downey Jr., who this is a this is a project that he produced with pride. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a passion project. A passion project. For years. You would think that anybody involved with this movie would look at the other two Dr. Doolittle movies and say, wow, let's not do that. But... They expanded on that because what the old Dr. to do little movie did was like none of these animals had anything to say. Everything was to make a kid laugh. And that's exactly what they did here, except that this had a bigger budget. And what they wanted to do was make an epic blockbuster. And to show you the level that they take it with these animals cracking jokes, they take it to mythological creatures where Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doolittle saves the day by. F- this is where we're going, people, with this in a kid's movie fisting. A dragon's ass to give and it being, an enema. <laughs> giving her pretty much an enema so that could, she she can clear her colon to reward him with a fart. Give us a deep breath. <gasps> Hold it. Uh, word of warning. What's up, Doc? When we're removing the blockage. That's another thing I hate. They, you know, they might work for animated movies, but when you have like a film where it's a period piece and you have one, you know, have several characters, and usually the white characters who are doing like whatever is appropriate for that period, but then you gotta throw that urban character in. Yo, what's up, Doc? Mm-hmm. Hey, what you doing up in that ass, man? Shit! Yeah. You know, when they do that, I, that is something that really annoys me. She know. <laughs> and long too, boy. People, this is just, this is just a, this is a bloated blockbuster. This is a bloated blockbuster wannabe. And I'm not going to blame Robert Downey Jr. You know, he's producer. He wanted to go in and do something I'm sure that was different from what we have here. But the cynical way that, that they try to give kids what they think is funny instead of giving them anything of depth, that is another, that's a, that's another sore point with me. Let's go into my number seven movie of 2020 as far as worst movies of 2020 that I've seen. And Noah and I spent the whole summer together. 
Breakups are basically automatic. Automatic. <sighs> Sometimes I hate high school. People, if you couldn't tell by the annoying dialogue <laughs> right there. Five years ago, you mean? <laughs> yeah, people, you can tell by the, the annoying dialogue right This is the kissing booth, mm. too. I'm honestly shocked to see this on your list. Because when you did the review, you seemed favorable to it. I don't think I did. I think it was funny, you know, but I said, this is some bullshit. I gave this, I gave this straight up bullshit. And the reason why I gave this bullshit is because, we, you know, I was laughing at some things. Like I said, I don't get too angry at movies, you know. I just laugh at some of the things that they do. And this is where we start to get into the offensive area. This is why this is high on the list of some others. Because with this movie... Which I never saw a kiss in booth one, but I heard that there were problems with that, with boundary issues of people, you know, kissing on each other and whatnot. I don't know who they are and sexualizing people. I can kind of see what that that's the case because, you know, listen, I will tell you this much. This is offensive on some levels for me. One, for trying to convince us that people who are blatantly 30 years old are high school <laughs> students. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here with that. I'm offended by that. Nice to meet you, but I'm a little hungry, so I'm going to go get myself... Snack. Motherfucker, I hope it's in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> I'm 16. Because <laughs> yeah. you were clearly, you were clearly people. A I, gave, look, I gave up a long time ago trying to hold these kids to their age, you know, our people to be in high school students when they're clearly not. But, but sometimes. 30, when I look at this man, ain't 30 years old? <laughs> Nah, man, yeah, yeah, that one already made made me like, all right, you know what? That's sometimes people just try they 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 do the the whole the thirty years a high school student thing to the point where it's so obviously not that I gotta say, you know what? Just based on that alone, fuck you. But, <laughs> but it's also weird because, and again, this is one of those movies that it lives up to some sort of female uh, sensitivities fantasies, romance, or whatever, that they look over a lot of shit. And this is, man, this is weird because it's one of those movies where the roles were reversed. This would be sexist and creepy. You know, the way they had these kissing booths set up to where people are, you know, uh, women are kissing dudes who they don't know are the way women describe men and talk about how, like, yeah. ooh, I would, I, I would eat that ass, you know? And it's yes. like, it's like, get the fuck out of here, man. No, let's all be fair about this shit. Let's let, let's have dudes talk about a woman just the way they talked about a man in here and everybody be cool with that. You know, let's all be equal opportunity. But this shit right here, you know, fucking. I'm not, not but by the way, I'm not even offended by that too much. It's just that with all this going on, it's a bland film. Yep. It's so bland that it makes it, it makes the females in the movie look shallow and empty as hell. Yeah. I watched it. I was like, man, there's nothing going on here at all. This is a straight up suck ass soap opera. I love how they're trying to legitimize themselves by having like Molly Ringwald, the classic, one of the one of the five brat pack. You yeah. know, I was like, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that is true, oh, man. man. Clever with it. Yeah. It's not clever. <laughs> and also, here's another thing with this. Uh, I'm starting to just, and you can call me sensitive or nitpicking or whatever, but I'm I'm not taking any kind of passes on these movies anymore, where you have all the characters who are white are if they're black that if, and if they're light skin they're in the foreground but I'm, t I'm sick of these fucking movies where you know you you're you're satisfied you're content with putting all the black characters the, the darkest Way the, in the darkest back. black characters in the background and that's all they do here let's go to our number six movie on my list of worst of for 2020 no oh, you know me I always land on my feet. You know what? This is the movie that actually made me feel more for the possibly racist rednecks in it <laughs> than anybody else. <laughs> People, this is Hillbilly Elegy. This is a Ron Howard movie. And I am I can probably think of some ways where this movie went south real quick. Uh, <laughs> went south. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way way more south than where it already was when we began. It's funny because the, the movie takes place in Ohio, which I don't consider south, but it feels so it feels southern, southern. Yeah, this southern is the, and This is the Appalachians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the Appalachians right here, people. And this deal with the, you know, this is really something that they thought, oh, here's what it is. So they thought because, oh, my God, we're dealing with deep, deep issues like poverty, poverty probably due to the op opioid crisis of the people in the Appalachians. And we have the the underdog story and the feel-good story of the guy that came up out of that, they felt like they had something profound, something so dramatic that 
this was going to go for the Oscars, man. And they didn't realize how silly this shit was. I laughed at so many moments in this movie. Some of the moments that are supposed to be the worst people. And you're going to get mad at me, but watch the movie. One of the most hilarious things in this movie is child abuse. Mm -hmm. I laughed at child abuse. It's so unintentionally funny. You can't help but fucking laugh at it because how it escalates each time. It's like, well, it can't get worse than that. Oh, my God. And it, and it just fucking bangs down the goddamn and, door, and, kicks and, in. And it goes from zero to 60 on a dime. Yes, it uh, does. The, the funny thing is, is that what this movie is, is something that's usually reserved for black movies. And you see it for black movies all the time. But this is poverty porn. Yeah. It's just a bunch of fucking people yelling. Yeah. The melodrama in this movie is way over the top. They think that yelling equals drama. It's melodrama at best it just feels rushed and disjointed which what is what make things feel funny mm-hmm. because it almost feels like these are just isolated scenes because they're not connected to each other well they they do the dumb thing with the flashbacks they do flashbacks the whole and, thing and it, and it hurts the movie a, a lot yeah uh, and, and i have friends who've read uh this guy's book who like they were like well it's a great book and the movie just pl- shows us what's in the book i'm like yeah, but when you just watch it, not knowing any of that, it's it's not good. If you don't know that, and I'm going to tell you something else about that book. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, a lot of this movie feels disjointed because the flashbacks that they do. And it feels like there's a feeling of this movie being rushed. And this movie would have probably been better had they told this in a linear fashion mm-hmm. instead of going to all these flashbacks. The, the, the way this movie's edited and the way these scenes don't connect. It makes you disjointed with the characters. And that's what make you that's what makes you laugh at them because you have no emotional connection to these characters. You laugh at them because these things are supposed to be tragic. It's like, well, I don't fucking know what the connection is has to the scene before. So you just these little chunks of hillbilly <laughs> elements here <Yeah. laughs> that feel like almost skits in a way because these almost these redneck characters are caricatures of themselves. Y- yeah. I- uh, I gotta say, I thought um, Amy Adams and Glenn Close were terrible in this movie. Mm-hmm. I thought they were—they were pretty much cartoon characters for me. I mean, they have Amy Adams the way she, she's just so escalating. She, like you guys said, she goes from zero to a hundred in these scenes. You know, running around all the place. And I think Glenn Close is like a hobgoblin. <laughs> in, in this, I mean, the way they have her moving around. I, honestly, I, I, I like Glenn Close because she really did feel like I did too. Oh, like a, like like a meme a creature. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Amy Adams is just reduced to screaming in every. Every scene, yeah, and that, and it's no fault of Amy Adams. It's just that's just the way it was written. It's our direction, bad, bad direction, yeah. and bad script. That's I have what to was. disagree with you on Glenn Close, though. Mm. Glenn Close, I love your description of a hobgoblin. She, <laughs> yeah. like, she looks like one of the fucking elves out of like Harry Potter. Yeah. I've, I've just, I've just <laughs> met and known a lot of people like her. I was like, all right, she's nailing it. <laughs> no, actually, she has some of my favorite lines. She has a line that says, "Kiss my ruby red asshole." <laughs> and some of my favorite scenes are with her. Like seriously, if some of these movies, or if some of these scenes had been in order, they would have had the emotional impact that they wanted I love that scene where oh, I forgot the character but the, the movie's based on a guy who came out of the Appalachians as being sort of a, the, the, the product of a household where the mom was on opioids the mom being Amy Adams and of course grandma being too poor and the community being too poor to do anything he came out and actually became a successful lawyer and apparently you know author after that uh, he credits that to his, his the, the hard, harsh upbringing of his grandmother. And I thought th- those scenes were actually pretty cool. I'll leave you there. This is a scene where he stole a calculator from uh, Radio Shack, and her broke ass went and bought it for him just mm. to prove a point. And he repays her by trying to chunk that shit out the window. Mm. And at that point, she behaved like everybody thought she said, I'll beat your fucking ass if you do that again. You can't tell me who I can hang out with. You're not my mom. I'm all you got. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's that's a really good scene. So there's moments in there where you actually see the movie and the potential that it had, but overall it's just man, it is it is really overrun with so many scenes of melodrama. That's ridiculous. Yes. yes. It's yeah. Yeah. so exaggerated. Well well just even the 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 conceit that that he's like, Well, I have this this interview with a big firm that could really change my life. But my mom's using it again. I don't know what to do. And you're like, bitch, are we gonna have to sit through 30 minutes of this movie while you can't figure out the most obvious answer to all yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Shit, fuck your mother and help her later. Yeah, mm-hmm. get off that shit when you got money. And it's funny because you're saying that this movie was rushed and didn't have enough time. It's kind of long. They had the time. They just didn't use it well. I think no. I think when you see a movie that's long, they had the footage because you can shoot a lot of shit. Yeah. 
and still not edit that edit that. Shit oh yeah, together. no, the editing's bad. It, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, like you watching, you're like, okay, the thing you should have focused on, you didn't. You no, had, you didn't. You had all this other stuff. But before I leave out of this film right here, that my biggest thing was like the, the, almost the source material. Yeah, like I said, man, <laughs> you know, this is. I felt for these poor people in the Appalachians when they do have an opioid problem, whether they be racist people or not, I don't know them, but all I know is, is that it's another one of those movies that says, hey, you know what? Based on the source material and that book that it's based off of, hey, I made it so all these people can make it. And it's yeah. like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, he's, 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 he's one of those bootstrap guys. And yeah. you're just like, man, fuck you. And you Cause, yeah. cause he, cause he's talking out of two sides of his mouth. On one, on one side, he's going like, hey, these people have problems. The opioid crisis yeah. really hit them yeah. hard. You don't understand. But on the other side, it's like, yeah, but I got out of it, so it's really on them that they can't get out of it. And I always say this when it comes to like the inner city with black people, but I say this with anybody, you know, though, you know, these 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 poor white people, man, they everybody thinks that that you know, uh, uh, pick yourself up by your stroop, by your bootstraps uh, explanation is gonna work, and it doesn't. It doesn't. All these poor communities, there's a whether you be black, white, in between, there's always a social and economic thing that goes on with them, and this movie's trying to like, you know, just really just narrow it down to, well, just work harder. And it's like, yeah. fuck off, man. These motherfuckers are strung out on drugs. Yeah. Well, I did it so other people can do it. It's like, those other people aren't you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, here it comes. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Chris. I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> look, how you got to laugh. They say, Corey and Martin look like Cruella DeVille henchmen. <laughs> 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 oh my god, that's the comment of the night. Oh my lord, that was good. Oh fuck. Oh, they yelled this. Oh, I forgot I can't see who said it. It went by too fast. Let's do the uh, number five <clears throat> movie. The number five movie. On my worst of 2020 list, worst of movies for 2020 list. Between Adolf Hitler and Al Capone, it was dead. What's this about? We have information that your client may have tucked away a very large sum of money. You know what? I admire the, <laughs> I admire the, uh, the thought process behind trying to yeah. make a different Capone movie. Mm -hmm. This is people. This is Capone. This is by the director of. Four fan tab, four fan four stick, fan four stick. <laughs> What's that guy's name? Uh, Josh, Josh Trank. Trank. J Josh Trank. Josh Trank apparently has this whole obsession with body horror, <laughs> and he decided to apply it to Capone, the Al Capone story. Then this is uh, Capone, which has the actor. What's his name? Uh, Tom, Hardy. Tom, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, who people keep saying like he can do no wrong. Bullshit. He's been doing that. He's been doing wrong for years, in, yeah. my, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with this one. It's, an, it's a good idea to show uh, 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 Capone in the years where he had syphilis just falling apart. I I, I, I applaud that cool different idea. approach. It's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. But when your movie falls apart with it, <laughs> that don't make no sense. Because all it is is this man just sick and being more disgusting as it goes along. And that is your movie. Well, I blame also the script writer and I also blame the director. Because if this is what we go by with the script... This went nowhere. Nowhere. I mean, really, it's just about a guy deteriorating to the point where it's not tragic. He's he he's comically babbling. I mean, yes. there's a point where he starts farting in this movie. You know what? I'll see if I can even find the scene. If Fart if it was shit. revealed that the actual scriptwriter was Adam Sandler, it'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a scene where he's farting. And it's played up for laughs. And this is and, and, and if you have to ask yourself, is this meant to be funny? Or is this? Or is, or is he paying, playing this seriously? Then there is, there is a, a, a there's a, huge a problem. problem. There's a problem. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> oh, here's a scene that I was, I was waiting like, on. Linda Cardellini deserves better than she that. really does, yeah. man. Yeah, she really does. But this is the scene. That one at first, I would get. I'll give the movie credit. That one right there is actually kind of horrifying because it's like, damn, you know, this man really is messed up. Now, to that scene's credit, if the movie had been able to follow that kind of disgust with this character, where it's like, wow, and, and almost like to a point, where you take a really bad person and you make them, you make the audience feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. That could have been something cool. 
that really would have played in conflict with how far can our our empathy, our sympathy go for a character. But that's not what they do here. The shit gets comical. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's the audience saying the, that. The, the way he's up there. Arr, arr, arr. People, that, you're right. This belongs in the in an in a Adam Sandler movie mm-hmm. more than it does in a movie that's supposed to be a drama. I l- Listen, I just don't know what they were trying to do with this film because the tones were so off. There were moments where it seemed like it was funny, and I was confused whether it was supposed to be funny or not. And then there were moments where it was just downright confusing and bad. It it's confusing because you're like, okay, look, if you're trying to shock me, you've already done it. So yeah. why are we still lingering yeah. here? It's, i tell you what the biggest problem with this is. is that Again, that's what it had. It was just a movie that just showed you a guy that was falling apart, in mostly with his body functions. And about an hour of that movie is what it is. I appreciate whatever intentions were behind the movie, but the results are horrendous with that. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go into my number but four. But it did reestablish that, like, wow, Josh Trank sucks. Yeah, well, like I said, I ain't gonna get personal with him. He might make a movie at some point. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I hope he does. Yeah. Even if I say I, somebody's I, bad, I know everyone can turn things around. Yeah, I, I know he had a vision with this, and I applaud you for trying to do it, but it just didn't come out that way. Uh, so hopefully the next vision will be better. Anyway, let's go to number four. A number four movie, and you guys are probably saying, well, shit, I knew it had to be somewhere on this list. Well, it's at number four. When you wake up, Grace, please tell me what happened. What did he do to you? He put this that ragged ass wig on me right now. <laughs> he, he keeps changing my wigs. Yeah. I don't know how he's doing this. <laughs> Why is one of the best movies of the year on your on your worst of list? I know, man. I know. I mean, no, I honestly didn't expect comedy. this to be there. Yeah. Because you, you and I have so much overlap. It's just different places for Different things. places. Well, this had to be here. People, it's a fall from grace. Tyler Perry's masterpiece, <laughs> which he tried to go and cover up. Listen. You know me. I do praise Tyler Perry, and I do not budge on that. This man, as far as I'm concerned, is doing his thing, so I have no pro- I, I, I encourage it. You got your, you know, your businessman, and do what you got to do. But that does not mean that I can overlook the. And I say this is an offensive area. I cannot overlook the offensive, po- offensively poor production <laughs> on this movie. I can't let it slide. It gets. You know, we can start from from bad to worse. We all know those wigs in the movie. We've seen how those wigs, and he, and oh, he'll those change, wigs. <laughs> and he'll change the wigs in a scene. Mid, mid-scene. Look at that. There's one hair right there. We go, we cut to this. And then we cut to this. <laughs> People, that is the next shot. That is the next shot. Let's also yeah, you've changed, it have I? <laughs> <laughs> and also, people, and I have to pick, and I'm gonna tell you why I have such bad footage of this. Let's also take a look at the infamous diner scene, mm. where my man in the background was not mm. only drinking but eating air. Me. Sorry, I guess, but tell me something. Watch this dude. I mean, I'm- no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Didn't even put it in his mouth. The fuck didn't touch his lip at all. Eating oxygen. Mm, People, that's also, all good. That's that's also one where there's a glass. Look at that glass. That glass ain't got yeah. nothing in it. But he picks that up and like, mm, oh. People. Satisfying. It's acting. Yeah. <laughs> and now you would say, well, Tyler Perry is doing his thing. Let the man do his thing. But he listened. And you, for, for people who talk about where well, you critics out there, you snarky critics, man, y'all just go too hard on people. No, this is one of the few cases where I say when somebody does something that bad, you have to call them out on that shit. It makes them better filmmakers and it makes them conscious of what they do. It makes them aware of what they do. He went back and changed all that shit. Mm-hmm. Did you, he? Yeah. You go on Netflix. He changed all that shit, man. Oh, I showed no. you the scene with the with the hair. What he did was go back and you probably won't even notice it. I'm going to show you this scene with the wig. He went back and just used a different angle to where you won't notice that cut. You know Danielle Mitchell? She died here. Was that they had sent me the worst of the worst. So what they did there was just use alternate cuts. Mm. Right. 
they use different angles and whatnot. It, pro- I think there's an angle here later on with it that they use. That's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, is. it really is. I can't enjoy it the way I want to now. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> yeah, you get friends over, you're like, watch this. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, release the peri <laughs> <Yes. laughs> In that Amanda. scene, apparently that scene with the guy that was eating uh, air in the background, that's edited out too. Oh. Thank you. I know you've had many young, beautiful women. Yeah, you know, so they went to a wide shot with that. Where you don't it have to see that. It works better to do it this way. Why didn't you do it that way the first time? Corey, t- tell me, answer me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but all I know is that this is where criticism comes in. Not everybody's trying to be mean. I've kind of pulled back from trying to, like, again, take things personally from people because directors have visions. And things don't always work out the way sure. sometimes you think they do. You look back at the footage yeah. and you're like, damn it, this is a perfect shot, but yeah. I can't use it. That's why I don't want to pick on any kind of directors <laughs> of people. But look, I will, sh- I, will, I will talk about what's in front of my face. And I look at this and I say, all right, this is where it comes in, where people like criticize something. And, and you know, hopefully it makes people better. Because as you said, that worked better right there. Mm-hmm. And But I, the, they look... Even with that, that movie wasn't all that great. But with the, the cut that I saw with all the mistakes... We're going to that. And that made that one of the worst movies that I'd seen this year, but also one of the best movies mm-hmm. I saw this year. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, I have to criticize it upon the worst list because it's not the director's vision. <laughs> and he wanted, he wouldn't want to recognize for like the way I look at it as being one of the best movies. Sure. That's not the way he want to see it because as, I, as far as I'm concerned, this movie is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> Straight, bitch. <laughs> you know, look, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of this oh, movie right here. So and that goes on my list as well. Also, one of the most entertaining movies of the year. And I do recommend the film, but I believe they, they meant for it to be. All right. We're getting down to it, people. We get down to the top three worst films of 2020 of my list. Let's go to number three. You know what? I probably don't even have a whole lot of explanation for this. This movie speaks for itself. Can I help you with something, ma'am? Are you available? Mm, yeah, it just might be. You can take care of yourself just fine. Now, you're looking at this, you're like, what kind of lifetime shit is this, people? <laughs> lifetime is like, eh, no, I think yeah. so. <laughs> so, people, you don't, you don't even know, probably looking at that part right there, what the hell this is. But let me see here. I'll, I'll move it up to a part where you'll finally understand what this is and probably why this goes on my list because the 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 more offensive the movie was, the higher that it ranked. Uh, you're looking at that thing as some lifetime, simple, uh, you know, uh, uh, romantic shit. Oh, no, 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 no. Family. OJ did a lot for them. That's how he draws people in. <laughs> so you didn't even know. I didn't know this existed. <laughs> no, I, I, I knew what it was. <laughs> people. Oh this is the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. This is one of the most offensive movies on this list. Oh, no. Because. Plus, it starts your girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's her name? Uh, uh, now I'm blanking on it. Why am I? Oh, oh, um, oh, oh fuck. Uh, oh, American Beauty. I know. Why Why? why I just go blank? I was going to say her name and until you asked me. And then my, and went, boop. Yeah, you, uh, man, you forget my girlfriend's name, man. <laughs> I, I, man, we, me and this girl were flirting hard. In the uh, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mia, no, uh, uh, Mia, Mia Savari. Mia, yeah, that's oh. it, Mia Savari. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, y'all heard the story. We did an interview with her and uh, uh, Thor uh, Birch. Thor Birch. We were they were flirting like a motherfucking interview, man. I think they were for you. drunk. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> I, I think they were drunk, too, but I don't know, man. Like, especially Mina. She was, she was all about you. I wish I could have been somebody so I could have nailed that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had, you had a, a rep going like, all right, move, move yeah, it on. Yeah, that's what it was. But they were, yeah, nervous. man, they were into it. But, uh, but yeah, people, this is the this is the uh, the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. Ooh. This is a movie that tries to, that tries to explain the, to give you an alternate reality or maybe another excuse or reason for the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and, and what's his name? Uh, Ron Goldman. Ron, Ron Goldman. Where they say that uh, the murder might be, it might have been because of the crazy handyman. <laughs> <laughs> did OJ, is did, he did, producing yeah, this? Did, did OJ write this movie? Yeah, I was going to say, see? <laughs> Played by Nick Stahl, right? <laughs>
They chose a dude. <laughs> He's like the, the one of the John Connors. He's like, no, no, I'm still alive. I'm still doing okay. He, he wasn't. Term- he was Terminator. He 3, was John Connor. Connor. Yeah, he was. Oh my god, I haven't yeah, seen he him was so John long. Connor. Yeah. Wow. But also that this movie is one of those things where all you Negroes look alike, or they just chose a guy who has a similar head shape to O.J. Simpson, but looks nothing like him. Oh yes. shit! Right there, he does. He's like he's a little darker. I, I mean, he, yeah, he's certainly darker, but that head shape is dead on. That, no, that head shape is def- the, definitely the head, him. The head shape and the lips and even the nose. But I tell you, man, uh, listen, you know, what, what, I mean, what do I have to say? You know, that, need I say more? I mean, I can go on about how cheap this movie is because this is a split, this is a straight up exploitation flick. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's gaining money off of an infamous story that I, that's not even like really talked about that much. But they decided like, hey, you know what? We feel like it's important and we can make some money off of it. it the, the fact that they're going in and like years later. Years later, after nobody's been talking about it, they're still trying to mine these dead people for money. It's insulting, man. It'd be different if they actually did something that was of some, of some substance. But this is just a lame thriller. It's a ridiculous thriller, man. But I think this existence says it all for itself. You read that title, you know what's up. Yeah. You're like, why would I want to watch this? Mm. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's just so, it's, it's, it, a lot of the scenes in this are just inept, man. I mean, there's things, there's, there's, there's flashbacks. There's scenes where they, they, they got to show you how dangerous the killer is while he's flirting with other women, so he's and killing them. Doesn't a lot of it take place at an abandoned mall? No, not a lot of it, but oh, some of it. Okay. There's, there's a scene in an abandoned mall when they went on a Sunday and shot this shit because nobody is there except OJ's wife. <laughs> so, And there it is right there. That's my number three. Like I said, the more offensive you are, the higher we are on the list. That is why when we get to number three on my list, uh, no, I'm sorry. Number yeah, two. two, two. Number two. It's all about offensiveness. On my, it's based on offensiveness here. My number two movie on my worst of movies of 2020 goes to this pretty offensive film right here. Good morning, Miss Garcia. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm immune. I'm immune. You, don't worry. you know, this had a kind of a cool approach to COVID-19. The movie is Songbird. It, it shows what would happen if the situation got worse. But when they start bringing in just a simple, ridiculous uh, romantic subplot, or, or it's not even a subplot, the main story is, is, is a love story, which doesn't work out that well. Uh, you've realized that this is a movie that's just trying to take advantage of a moment. It's 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 dumb tropes from from lesser action movies things that don't make sense and then boil it all down to but it's really just comes down to a love story yeah. like man fuck you yeah get out of here with that shit i mean and, and the thing is is that even if it had been better directed but because it's made under these restrictions it does you can feel the cheapness of it not that a movie can't be more creative with their their limitations and low budget but this doesn't do that and it gets more ridiculous the only thing that's entertaining <laughs> the movie is the is the silliest thing in the movie this is a movie where the highest government office is consistent of trash man yeah. who have taken sanitation, the Department of Sanitation. Like, no, they straight up tell you like one dude is just, I used to be a garbage dude, but look at me now. And that's, uh, what's his name? Peter like, Stormare. Stormare. Peter Stormare, who was actually fun in the movie, yes. but he just adds to the craziness and stupidity of this film. Department of Sanitation. Thank you, no where they stick his name first. <laughs> Producer Michael Bay. It's the new Michael Bay movie. He's like, listen, I, <laughs> I just put my name on it. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's your movie. Maybe don't worry. They chop and screw this shit. Yeah. This is my message to yeah. you. Uh, I know you're uh, in there. <laughs> yeah. He, he's actually fighting the movie. But I mean, yes. the movie's just so, listen, if it was not the involvement of COVID-19 in there, it might be a bullshit movie at best. But... <laughs> But because they pulled that in there, you could tell that they're like trying to take advantage of a moment. It's yeah. like, uh, come on, man! If you're gonna do that, make a make a better film. The yes. reason why it goes to fuck you, and the reason why it's number two on the list is because at a time when people are still dying from this, and if we yep. have we still don't know, and there's a new strain out there, and it's just people who are believing lies. This. The, and, 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 and disinformation which is making the situation worse mm-hmm. the reason why this movie gets a big fuck you for me and it's number two on the list and almost number one if it weren't for this other film um, it's adding 
to this to 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 the situation that is bad right now. It is feeding into the to the fears and different disinformation that people are buying into because the movie's telling you like, oh, look at the government holding you down. Look at the government telling you what to do. The government is yeah, evil. The government is evil. Hey, They're taking hey, away your rights. Ignore everything they said. And you just be you. And you know what? Especially if you love each other, fuck all these safety precautions. You do you. So for the the the, the this movie adding to a bad situation already where we're trying to get these people settled down from believing all this bullshit, this movie makes it worse. Yep. This is some. This is almost like a piece of propaganda in a way. Yeah. Only thing that, what you're, cause you're asking yourself, well, what could you hate more than that? I, I, I do know yeah. and, I, and I'm, yeah. I'm ashamed I didn't have this on my list. It should have mm. been number one. Well, Martin, mm. you can still add it or you can come in and make an, you know, some amendment to it. But this is, people, my number one movie that I hate. I absolutely fucking hate it. Makes me almost hate other people. Number one movie in my worst films of 2020 has the honor of this film right here. And I see some people already guessing it. Are you lost, baby girl? Why am I here? I want to get out now. This is impossible. You know, people, you mm. hear this being spoken in another language. I think the other language is Polish. It is yeah. Polish. This is yeah. a Polish. This and, is a and, Polish and, film. And that's why it skipped me because I looked at the release uh, 2020 releases from American movies, and that's why it went under my radar. Yeah, yeah. people, this is 365 days. I look. I'll, I'll tell you something. I'm less angry about movies. You see me trying to be fair about shit. I've said this. Like I'm not trying to take things personally with films. But this is why it's number one on my list because it is the most offensive thing, mm. and it makes me really want to. You know, this time where people are supposed to be more conscious of this kind of thing, it makes me fucking mad at them, and I want to be on their side. This is a movie. I look at it and I want to like. Not, I, I want to see what people are seeing with it because this piece of shit pisses me off, man. Uh, it's a story of a man who kidnaps a woman, holds her, holds her hostage, does sexual things in front of her until she's Stockholmed into pretty much fucking him. Mm. And yet it's pitched as a love story. You know what? And it's pitched as a love story in, instead of what it is, rape. Women get this idea of being swept up, even though you're supposed to be. And y'all, you women need to get on these motherfucking bitches who think that this is cool. Call them out. This is like I told you. This is like black people looking at slave movies, talking about, oh my god, those were great times, weren't they? Yeah. Oh my god, those guys are awesome. Those slave masters. They they, uh, I they mean, treated some of them were so cool, well, right? Man, though that slave master fed that guy and gave him a lot of clothes right there. Man, those were good. Those man, those were the days, weren't they? No, nah, y'all need to jump on these fucking bitches who sit up here and talk about, oh Jesus, oh my God. But did you? Oh yeah, sure, that seemed weird. But he was hot. Yes. If if their mindset would change if that guy was actually fat and creepy looking. There's a moment where her best friend's like, um, this sounds doesn't sound all that cool. No, no, it's great. No, no, girl, you're right. You're right. It's it's awesome. That that. I'm yeah. just, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 no. Yeah, you know what? For all you so called feminists out there and the ones that gonna jump on me because I used some word that you didn't like or I said something or I didn't like think Wonder Woman was the greatest woman movie in the world, whatever the fuck you got. Suck the dick and hang off the balls if you like this shit right here, because this is truly offensive. It's trash. Yeah. It is garbage. I've never seen a movie and, I, and Netflix should be a fucking shame of themselves for putting this up here. And that is why why it is the number one movie on my list hands down nothing else could pass this right now a movie about fucking rape get out of here